I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is Heroes Arise, the streaming broadcast that equips, encourages, and empowers you to arise as the hero, warrior, and champion that God created you to be. You matter, you are important, and you've got a key role to play for the kingdom in the earth. So thank you for joining me again this week so we can continue to pour into you. And first of all, let me say I'm super grateful to be here with you guys this week. I'm sorry that I haven't gotten a show out for actually two weeks in a row. That almost never happens. I was severely under the weather for a while and praise God have um, uh, bounced back and am grateful to be with you. But I wanted to apologize for you guys um, for missing a couple weeks. I've missed being with you. I'm grateful to be here with you now. I'm grateful that you are here with me and I'm excited to share this topic with you. Because let's face it, like we talk about a lot, we are in some seriously epic and historic days. And, you know, that's an exciting thing to hear. God's handpicked you to be here in the midst of these truly epic and truly historic days. But let's get real. What does that look like on days? What that looks like is that we look around and we see what the enemy is up to. We see wickedness, unrighteousness running rampant. There's treachery and tyranny and overreach by governments and world organizations going on right now. There's lies and manipulation coming out from every side of the aisle in our governments. All forms of media seem to be lying and releasing fake news to spin their side of the story and try to control and manipulate and get us outraged and offended. So we spread their lies thinking, you know, we're standing against something wicked or standing for something that we've been told is true. There's sickness and disease everywhere. The pandemic, there's echoes of the pandemic. There's bad sinus infections going around. I got hit by one the other day. I, and I never, ever, ever want to give place to sickness, whether it's because we get naturally run down or because it's uh, something else going on. Sickness is never our portion, so we must always stand against it. But it's everywhere. We have people being hindered, limited, and interfered with by sickness and disease. We've had people die from sickness and disease. We've had peaceable people die from treatments for sickness and disease. We can see the enemy all over the place in this. On the economic front, there's inflation. There are people who are in lack and really suffering because of inflation, because of prices going up. People are having to choose, am I going to fill my tank so I can go to work this week? Or am I going to feed my kids today? There is poverty. There's financial devastation on even greater measures being threatened or forecast. There's so many opportunities for fear these days. There's wars going on and even threats of bigger conflicts and more conflicts on the horizon. There's bitterness, offense, hatred, anger, fear, and frustration running rampant. We see it all everywhere. You're probably thinking, Robert, what happened to the part about encouraging us? I promise that's coming. I promise. But this is what's going on. I mean, we might as well have giants in the land, actual physical giants in the land, strutting about, mocking God, mocking God's plans and purposes, and mocking his people, because we're seeing wickedness at that level. So it would be very easy to look at all this and think, oh my gosh, there is no encouragement. It's, it's the enemy running rampant. What the heck is going on? But what if there's something else that is going on in the midst of all this? You know, God recently asked me a question. And when he did, it really shifted my perspective on some key things. Because let's face it, that big list I went through of stuff that's going on. Some of you are going to hear that and go, yeah, 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 I see that. I'm aware of that. But God's so much bigger in this area. And other areas, some of you are going, yeah, 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 I see that. I'm aware of that. But God's so much bigger. And then again, let's get real. For some of us, one of those areas or maybe a couple of those areas those are the ones we wrestle. Those are the ones when we see it or we're aware of it, we get discouraged or we get depressed or we get outraged or we get offended or we get bitter or we get angry or we get irritated. We get out of kingdom mindsets. We get got, get out of our places in God and even in, in God in ourselves where we can remain effective. And that's, that's really what the enemy wants. So I know my areas that can be my triggers. And I was wrestling through one of those areas recently where I was saying, God, I don't get it. I don't understand. It just looks like so much 
treachery, tyranny, lies, manipulation is going on and it's going unchecked. And even here in my state, people see it. We're aware of it. We're aware of the scale of it. And we're just sort of going along. And I was really wrestling. And I was saying to the Lord, help keep my heart right in this. Help give me a kingdom perspective in this. And that's when he asked me the question that he asked me that helped shift things for me. And when I share it with you, I believe it's going to shift some things for you and mightily encourage you. But just before we get to that, and just before we get to that question from God, I've got a couple announcements for you. First of all, I want to remind you, our new book, Realms of Power, is out and it's doing really great. We're getting so much incredible feedback on this. I'm getting messages on Instagram. I'm getting messages on Facebook. I'm getting emails from people telling me how much Realms of Power is helping them do exactly what we wrote it for, helping them tap into new dimensions of Holy Spirit power to, to be able to tap into the power to work miracles, tap into the power to shift atmospheres, tap into the power to create the power of favor, the power to make wealth. All the different 12 realms of power God highlighted to me in the visitation that brought this book forth. We're getting great feedback on. I want to make sure you know it's available everywhere now. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it in barnesandnoble.com. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. A buddy just sent me a picture of this book on the shelf in uh, Barnes & Noble in Texas, and he was super excited because it wasn't only on the shelf, but there was only one copy left. That Barnes & Noble had almost sold out of all that they had ordered in. But you can get it at christianbook.com. You can get the ebook edition, the Kindle edition from Amazon, an ebook edition from Apple, pretty much anywhere Christian books are available. You can get a copy. And if it's not available there or just in a general bookstore, you can ask them to order it in and Destiny will get them copies right away. You can also, of course, go to roberthodgkin.com to get your copy. But here's what I really want to focus on. For those of you who have ordered or are about to order it and are reading it, do me a favor. Go to Amazon and leave a five-star review with a book with a write-up of all that you learned from it, all that it meant you to. The publisher's asking me to ask you guys, because we've been getting so much great feedback, but it's been coming in through like personal messages to me, texts to me, emails to me, Instagram and Facebook messages to me, or the publisher's hearing from the people they're in relationship with. But there's only been a couple couple uh, reviews on like Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And when there's a five-star review, it triggers the uh, 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 algorithm and does something really powerful to help raise awareness of the book and have it come up in searches quicker or something. I don't pretend to understand, but here's the deal. If you go to Amazon and you leave a five-star review of the book, you're going to get entered into our drawing for our new um, mugs that came out with the book. And I meant to have one with me uh, while filming, but I forgot to bring it. I brought some lemon water instead um and i didn't put it in my mug i put it in a glass but it's our new rhm mugs where it says you are powerful with acts 1 8 and every time you take a sip of whatever your favorite beverage is you're going to be you're going to be reminded of that truth that you have every single one of these realms of power because you have the holy spirit and you are powerful it's a really cool looking high-end mug and if you leave a five-star review you'll get entered into the drawing for that mug and we're giving a bunch of them away it's not like we're just going to give away one so i think one one or two reviews were posted since we announced this um, uh, uh, drawing, and we're going to give away at least five the first go round. So make sure you get in on that. We'll ship it out to you. Shipping, handling, everything's free. We'll ship it right to you. I'll be in contact with you, um, whoever wins, and say, hey, please give us your address, and I'll get it to our resource department, and they'll send that mug out to you for free. So do me a favor. Leave a five-star review on Amazon. The other thing you can do to get in on this is leave a five-star review of our Heroes Arise podcast. We're getting um, uh, great views, mostly through Facebook Live and Facebook streaming. We're building our YouTube channel, um, and we're also – so like, share, and subscribe there – um, and then we're trying to build the podcast up. It's been growing and growing, and we're grateful for that. But we actually have a goal of seeing that double. And when you leave five-star reviews of the podcast, it does something similar. It triggers the algorithm. It gets it out there to more people. It gets it in front of more people's ears, as it were. And you can help us with that. You become our marketing department, and you'll get in the drawing for the free mug. I also want to ask you guys, here we are as we come to the end of the year, 
consider giving an end of year gift to Robert Hodgkin Ministries or Men on the Front Lines. You can go to roberthodgkin.com or menonthefrontlines.com, click the giving link or the donation link. And we've got a bunch of costs that have uh, popped up lately. We do all this media for free. We, we, we um, get it all out there for free. We don't charge for any of it on any of our platforms. We make it all available to you for free. Um, and we're doing some upgrades in our media and media equipment. We're doing some upgrades in ministry stuff. And it's not a big amount of cost that we've run into, but we've got about ten, fifteen thousand dollars at this point in cost. If you consider sewing an end of year gift, it would be a big help. Even a gift of five dollars, it all adds up. And that way you can get some end of year giving in. You can sow into the coming year. You can get that tax credit before the end of the year. We're 501c3. But do me a favor. If the shows or the YouTube channel with all the different videos we post there or the podcast or any of this has consistently been a blessing to you or encouraged you, consider sowing even a small gift. Consider sowing a huge gift, but consider sowing a gift into Robert Hodgkin Ministries or Men on the Front Lines and help us do some needed upgrades to continue to get all this free media out to you guys every single week. And then last thing I want to make sure you know about is something else free. We've got our next free webinar coming up. We've been doing this whole mentoring and empowerment series this whole year of a free webinar every month. Hopefully you've caught the ones from me. You've caught the ones from Patricia. We've had some special guests on as well. In December, we're, we're ending the year with a big bang. And our December a webinar is I'm going to do our course, The Victorious Soul, that came out of my book, Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions. And simply put, it's all about how to live in the more of God that you've been given through the finished work of the cross. We often cry out, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. But he gave me a revelation once when I was crying out to that. And he began to unpack more and more and more over years to me that became the book, Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions. About He actually can't give us more. He's given us everything. The key is to, to learn how to access and live in that fullness of more that he's given us. And it's a, it's, it's a glorious process. It's being personally mentored by the Holy Spirit. But what God wants to do is unlock the supernatural power of your mind, will, and emotions. Because there's so so much supernatural power in the soul realm. And people sometimes are shocked by that because we know there's lots of great stuff on soul healing and, our, and most of our souls do need healing. I've, I've benefited from soul healing. You know, it's, it's a, it's a really great ministry of people like Katie Souza, who's a dear friend of your reason mine. I love, I love her. I love her ministry. Yuri and I have both benefited greatly from Katie. I believe in soul healing, but one of the reasons God launched so many soul healing, inner healing, sozo healing, deliverance ministry healing ministries is because there's so much power in the soul because God created the soul. He created his body, soul, and spirit, and it's all imbued with him. It all has a divinely supernatural purpose. And when you learn to unlock the supernatural power of your mind, will, and emotions, you begin to unlock the ability to live in that more of God that you've been given. And that's what this webinar is going to all be about. That's what the Victorious Soul course is all about. It's a big topic. And like I said, we're going to end the year with a big bang. We're actually not only making this webinar free like we do with all our webinars, but it's a five evening webinar. It's on December 5, 6, and 7 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And then it'll be on December 12th and 13th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So five sessions, about an hour and a half each, all for free. And the great thing is when you sign up for free, you can join me live for every single one of the sessions, but you can also then use those same links to watch on demand. So you can rewatch it and rewatch it, or you can watch later, but go to patriciakingministries.com, click on the events link and sign up for the Victorious Soul webinar series in December. You're not going to want to miss it. All right. So those are our announcements. Let me take a sip of my lemon water. If you're uh, joining me live here, take a sip of your coffee, your tea, whatever you have in front of you. Oh, I like that. It's this little sparkling water that I mix this organic lemon juice in. It's, uh, it's very, very refreshing. I like it very much. And it gives me a nice vitamin C blast too. All right. So the question God asked me, here's the thing. Like I said, we can see wickedness, unrighteousness, treachery, tyranny, overreach of the enemy, of 
of his powers and principalities of his minions at work here in the earth. As I said, it could, we might as well have, you know, giants in the land just strutting up and down like a Goliath mocking God and his plans and purposes. Our God is openly mocked in media in entertainment in government in so many places. And if, if we don't have the right perspective, it can be discouraging. It can be heartbreaking. It can be grieving. It can be frustrating. It can be angering. But when I was, I said, I was wrestling through some things that had to do with a recent election here in Arizona. And if you're watching the news here in the U.S., or it's probably even making global news at this point, there's a lot of inconsistencies. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked and should be asked. And I was a little frustrated. Right. And I, I knew I was not in a kingdom perspective. So I was sitting in my prayer chair late that night. I was talking to the Lord, sharing my heart with the Lord. And I asked him for help. And I'm thinking he's going to give me a revelation, a download. A, a You know, he's sometimes he just does a whoop shift for me uh, or scripture comes up. But what I heard is he asked me a question because I'm detailing all the unright unrighteousness I'm seeing, all the injustice I'm seeing. And all of a sudden, the Lord speaks to me, not just about that, but all the stuff that I mentioned at the top of the broadcast. And he says, this is the question he asked me. What if this is actually a setup? And you know how when God speaks to you, asks you a question, it can be one little sentence like that or one little question like that. But it expands in your heart and mind when he shares it. Because as soon as he asked me that, that was the shift I needed. Because all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, what if this is? Just to set up. So I'm focusing on the darkness, the wickedness, the unrighteousness, the injustice. I'm getting so focused on that. I'm allowing myself to get angry or frustrated or irritated. But what if this is all just a setup? What if the, everything, what if there's so much more going on here than simply the enemy on parade, as it were? What if this is all actually a setup by God to bring about a kingdom purpose? And all of a sudden, I thought back to one of the words God gave me at the end of 2020. And I've shared this with you guys before, but it's worth reviewing. You know, 2020, I had a word for early on in 2020, and it was not the predominant word that so many of the wonderful prophetic voices declared about how 2020 was the year of seeing clearly. And we clearly see this and we clearly see that. Near the end of 2020, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is the year of seeing clearly. But one of the things that I wanted you to see clearly was what the enemy was up to. And if you think back to 2020, it was back then it seemed like the enemy was on parade. And we could clearly see so much with the pandemic, with the lockdowns, with government, with media, with with mistrust of government, with mistrust of the, the medical community and some of the things that they were recommending the more dangerous than the, the actual uh, COVID-19 and COVID-19 was dangerous. So it was just this, is this, this so much. And when God gave me that, it was like, Oh, I see. So he's like, I want my people to step into their place in of power as dominion stewards in the land. And I'm helping you clearly see what the enemy's up to, not under discouragement, but under you being like a sniper to be able to clearly take out the powers and principalities that are behind all of this. And that's only built because if you remember earlier this year, I shared with you guys how the Lord really highlighted Isaiah 60 verse two to me. And I have been declaring as many other prophetic voices for over a year now, how we'd entered an Isaiah 60 season where it was really our time to arise and shine for our light has come. And we were to expect the kingdom to arise in us, the glory of the Lord to appear upon us, increase of supernatural signs, wonders, miracles to put the reality of God and his kingdom on display through us, us stepping out to do those things. But this year, God highlighted in that whole thing about, um, and when we did that, nations would come to our light and kings of the brightness of our rising, shining. God really highlighted in verse two in my new living, my 96 new living, <clears throat> how it starts with behold darkness on the earth and deep darkness on the people, where God was doubling down on this thing of saying, hey, notice that I tell you to behold the darkness and the deep darkness, not ignore it, not deny it, not be freaked out by it, not be angry at it, but to behold it. Why? Because I want you to be able to shift into a kingdom perspective and know that you're seeing the darkness because I've positioned you to deal with that darkness. I like just like Moses in in the uh, Exodus, where 
God is saying to him, look, I'm going to supernaturally empower you with burning bush encounter to remind you who I am, remind who you are and supernaturally empower you to walk in that. And I believe that's the season that we're in. And God wants us to behold the darkness and the deep darkness, not so we allow fear, frustration, anger, irritation, uh, depression, d- discouragement to arise in us. But we choose to partner with him to allow the kingdom of God to arise in us, the glory of the Lord to appear upon us, his presence, his power, his personality, the fullness of his goodness to emanate from us and appear upon us. So many, not only people, but actually nations are impacted by it. And we get to be like Daniel, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, Joseph, in the midst of wickedness and wicked systems of man, we allow the kingdom of God to arise. His wisdom, his power, his miracles, his you name it of whatever he wants to manifest of who he is in us and through us so that rulers encounter God um, uh, and make place for him and honor him. Remember what happened with Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar. You think the ruler of your nation is wicked, tyrannical, and, and overreaching and unrighteousness and darkness? Nebuchadnezzar was probably worse. You think your government is untrustworthy? And let's face it, most of them are these days. But I am telling you that that Babylon was more wicked. They had necromancers and witches and the occultic priesthood in place as direct advisors. Now, you may say, so do we. And, but even if we do, it's not quite as out in the open and public as it was. And my point is, When Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego chose to behold the darkness and the deep darkness, but allowed the kingdom of God to arise upon them, in them, and through them, as opposed to anger, irritation, frustration, bitterness, rage, they didn't allow that to arise. They allowed the kingdom to arise. They allowed God to arise and appear upon them and appear through them in different ways that got the attention of a wicked nation and a wicked ruler to where God was honored in the land. What if everything we're seeing right now is simply a divine setup to see something like that come to pass? Remember Exodus 14, the Lord went in when I'm having this encounter and he asked me the question, what if this is all just a setup? Exodus 14 rose up in me as he was unpacking that little simple question to me. And all of a sudden my mind was going, whoa, what if this all is just all set up for something amazing God wants to do? And Exodus 14 came back to mind. Think about Exodus 14. Here the Israelites, the people of God, the yous and me's have seen God move in an amazing way. 400 years of bondage, servitude, and slavery is brought to an end through an escalating series of supernatural signs and wonders that finally gets Pharaoh's attention and, uh, and, and, and he eventually releases the people of God into freedom, into a walk with God so they can go to the promised land. And they're leaving Egypt, not only set free, but with the spoils of Egypt. And they've got to be celebrating. Our God is amazing. Our God can do anything. And then what happens? All of a sudden, Pharaoh decides to pursue the people of God. And when you look at Exodus 14, Closely, you're going to read and see this is all a divine setup because God hardens Pharaoh's hearts to go after his people for the entire army of the enemy to pursue the people of God, not under the destruction of the people of God, not even under the advancement of wickedness and unrighteousness, not even under the advancement of the mocking of God's people, God's plans, God's purposes, God himself. No, it's unto something. It was a divine setup. But at first, what does it look like? At first, all the people of God see is here comes the enemy in his army. God, where'd you go? God, what are you doing? The enemy is on parade. The enemy is on display. The enemy is advancing in the earth towards us. They were so focused on the enemy advancing and massing and moving that they don't even notice that God has placed a firewall of protection, a literal firewall of protection so they can see the enemy, but the enemy can't get at them. What if this is all just a divine setup? What if God is really up to something in the midst of all this wickedness and unrighteousness and treachery and tyranny and overreach and darkness 
and mocking of God and mocking of God's plans and purposes and mocking of God's people? What if all of that is not so much the enemy advancing and amassing as it is God allowing us to see that because he's got something up his sleeve in the midst of it? Because remember, the Israelites respond to all this by murmuring, complaining, why did you bring us out here to die? We were better off in bondage. At least we had leeks and onions. All we have out here is th these displays of darkness. And, and now all we have to, 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 to partake of is the fear, frustration, irritation, discouragement, despair, and depression that we are choosing to consume and give voice to. Where Moses says to them, hey, 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 guys, simply stand your ground. Watch God fight for you. The battle is his. And you'll notice the Lord actually brings a little bit of a correction to Moses. And I'm unpacking this some, but what it boils down to is God says, man, I love your confidence in me. I love your faith. I love your moxie. And I'm absolutely going to fight for my people. But you do have a role to play. And he says to Moses, stretch forth your hand. You speak to this situation because this is all a divine setup. I am up to something in the midst of this and I'm absolutely going to do it. But I created you to co-labor with me in this realm that you actually steward. It doesn't mean I'm not sovereign anymore. It means my sovereign plan is to co-labor with you. And that burning bush encounter we had, Moses, I reminded you who I am. I reminded who you, you who you are. And I supernaturally empower you to walk in it. This is one of those moments. Let's go. Let's do it together, son. And Moses says, all right, I'm going to stretch forth my staff. I'm going to speak to the situation. And we know the story. The Red Sea parts. The Israelites go across on dry ground. It doesn't just part. It parts not only the axe supernaturally, but the ground is instantaneously uh, dried. They have firm ground to walk on. And I tell you what, we have so much firm ground to walk on in our rock, Jesus Christ, right now. No matter how things look or feel, we have firm ground to walk on, and he will lead us into his promises. And if you're willing to let go of the murmuring, complaining, the fear, the doubt, if you're willing to get your eyes off the enemy for a moment, to get your eyes on God, to get instruction from him, to be part of his solution. Because the Israelites had to do that. We don't talk about this much. They murmur, they complain, they want to go back into bondage. They're a train wreck. They're responding completely incorrectly. They're blaming God. They're mad at God. They're, they're yelling, why did you bring us out here to die why did you bother giving us an ounce of hope just to have it crushed have you been there i'm not making fun of them we've all had our moments like that i actually want to commend them because in the midst of their massive pity party fear fiesta and panic attack in the midst of all of that at some point they chose to get their eyes off what they thought was the enemy advancing and amassing and get their eyes on god hear his instructions, hear his word, whether it was from him directly or through Moses, still they get in line with the plans and purposes of God and they choose to step out and trust him and they cross the Red Sea. And then here's what's really exciting. Here's where that question, what if this is all just a setup comes in? Because then when the enemy pursues, God removes that barrier of protection that had held the enemy back, that wall of fire. He removes that. The enemy advances thinking, the enemy's thinking, yeah, we got them now. Let's run them down. And they go after them and they start to go into the Red Sea. And all of a sudden, when Israel is on the other side, the people of God are on the other side. They get to the other side. I am telling you prophetically, you're going to get to the other side of this. But the, sh the, sh the shift, the key is get your eyes off the enemy long enough to get your instructions on how to deal with the enemy and what the enemy's up to from God and then trust him and advance. And God is going to lead you into the promises. I know how things look and feel. I wrestle myself at times, but I am telling you, you have dry ground to step out on in our rock and savior, Jesus Christ. Ryan Johnson recently released a word about how God spoke something similar to him about look to the dry ground. Go to Ryan Johnson U.S., um, um, uh, to hear that word from him. It's powerful. You're going to want to hear it. 
Uh, Joseph Z, another friend, has released a word recently where God spoke to him and said to his people, this is not the end. That yes, there is darkness in the earth and deep darkness on the people. It's actually going to increase in some areas. But for us, this is not the end. God has a plan. And if we walk with him, we sh- we, we're we going to not only get through it, we're not just going to survive, we're going to thrive. Go to Joseph Z Ministries YouTube channel and watch that word from Joseph Z. He's a great guy wonderful prophet you'll be blessed but remember when israelite get israel gets the other side the enemy thinks now we've got them and begins to pursue them they get into the red sea and here's the divine setup god releases the waters back right and it completely swamps crushes and destroys the enemy read the end of exodus 14 you're going to be so encouraged you know what it says i don't have it in front of me but my 96 new living translation says something right along the lines of and the enemy was completely utterly and totally destroyed never to be seen again what if Everything that's going on in the earth right now is a divine setup. What if everything going on in our governments, our media, our healthcare system? What if all this treachery, all this tyranny, all this overreach, all this darkness and wickedness and the stuff I talked about? What if even the economic challenges right now, they're real and they're challenging, but God's bigger. And what if this is all actually a divine setup for God to deal with and completely utterly and destroy powers and principalities that have been running rampant, just as rampant in our lands, in our governments, in our media, in our education systems, in our arts and entertainment systems, in our churches, in our families. What if everything we're seeing right now so vividly, and if we're not careful, discouragingly or maddeningly, what if This is all actually a divine setup to deal with those completely, utterly, and totally. Yes, God will do it, but we have a role to play, and that begins with this perspective shift from self-pity, fear, doubt, bitterness, offense, anger, all the things I've named. And we don't all give place to all of them, but most of us give place to some of them at least some of the time. And that shift comes when we go, what if? This is all a divine setup. What if all the emotional, physical, and financial challenges that we've faced these past couple years are not nearly so much about what the enemy is doing that we're finding, understandably, emotionally and physically and financially challenging, but what if all of this is actually unto us First and foremost, being able to look to God, get his instructions, remember his promises, remember all that he's done, all that he's won, all that he's given, and have him mentor us and how to live in the midst of that no matter what. What if all of this is unto us really discovering how to live in peace and joy and faith-filled and hope-filled expectation no matter what? What if this is about us discovering at all new levels how to access the reality and blessing and fullness of the manifestation and the restoration of relationship with our heavenly father and all of his kingdom here on the earth. You know, I, I was part of a apostolic and prophetic round table online last night. It was really great. I always enjoy them and I get to hear from different prophets and apostles from all over the world. We do it, what God's speaking to them. And there's always common denominators um, and there's interesting points of conversation and perspectives. I love those. One of the common things last night that we were all talking about is from different perspectives. Some were evangelists that, you know, their focus and their passion is all about the harvest. Some were apostles that were about how do we build the church for the harvest that's coming in. Some were, you know, disciples who were like, how do we get the people activated and everything need to be activated? And some were pastors. We had some great pastors on there. How do we take care of everybody in the midst of this? And, and but one thing that was common among all of us is we all are feeling that there's an invitation from God for us to partner with him to see an increase of supernatural manifestations of his glory realm, of his presence, of his power, of his personality, of miracles, of signs, of wonders, of things that are impossible to ignore and really difficult to deny. So people come to understand just how real our God is because talking about it's not going to do it. The lies in the media are going to out talk us all day long and out 
out broadcast us all day long, but one encounter with the supernatural reality of a God who loves no matter what, who heals, who saves, who delivers, who provides, who protects, who sets free, who brings peace, who brings joy, who brings hope. Come on, one encounter like that, and, and it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an impact on a person, on a nation. It's, it's just going to. And here's my point in all that. So we're all saying we know this is a time for an increase of the supernatural, of the reality, the supernatural reality of our God and his kingdom here in the earth to be put on display. But what I'm saying to you is what if God's plan isn't just for us to sit back and wait for him to do it? What if he's preparing for us right in the midst of all of this? What if this is all a divine setup so that we learn how to access that? We learn how to live inside of that, how to establish those realms in our life in the midst of all that's going on so they can be put on display and we can give all that away. What if that even because like, uh, yeah, like I said, I got hit with this really nasty bug. It started as a sinus infection and it was it's just a nasty bug and it hit me hard. And I can point to natural reasons for it. I'd been traveling a lot. I'd been doing a lot of media appearances, promoting the new book and like getting word out about the new book and interviews about the new book. And I was speaking at different conferences and events. And, you know, I got run down and there was a lot going on with our family and I won't go into all of it. There's a lot going on. And I got run down and I got hit by a bug and I could explain it away in the natural. And I, even with that sickness is never my portion. And you could say, well, so it sure sounds like it was your portion. You were hit pretty hard by a couple of weeks. It's like, yeah. And you know what I did almost every day, even when I had a fever, even when I, I, my had body aches and chills and just wanted to go back to bed. I took time every day to focus on the truth and the reality that my portion in God is not sickness and disease of any kind for any reason. My portion is a supernatural strength, a health, vigor, vitality. Jesus came. The enemy comes to steal, kill, devour, and destroy. And he was having his way with me through this sinus bug, you might say. But what if it was all simply a supernatural setup by God or a divine setup by God to help me really focus in on, this is not my portion. I don't receive this and focus on his truth that my portion is Jesus came so I can have life and have it in abundance. That includes health and vigor and vitality. My portion is I'm healed by his stripes. This must bow. My portion is my God is my high tower, my bulwark, my shield, and no sickness can come near me in Jesus's name. What if I'm establishing a realm of greater health, vigor, and vitality especially by focusing on that truth in the midst of a health attack. And I'm not saying we ever say, oh, yay, a health attack. This is great. It's an opportunity. I'm saying in the midst of any kind of attack, whether it's health, whether it's financial, whether it's relationship, whether it's trying to steal our joy, whether it's attack on a prodigal, whatever it is, what if that's actually a supernatural setup where we can be aware of what the enemy's up to, but also be aware that God, even in that, is with us. I recovered. I had, I had help. I was able to praise God for something every day, even in the midst of a bug that was, was having its way with me, it would seem. But I was overcoming. I knew I was overcoming. I knew I would rally. I knew it would shift. I knew it would break. Because every day, I would, and one day I even focused on this. God highlighted this to me. He said, remember, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places is yours in Christ Jesus. Not will be one day, is yours. And as I was standing there, I was actually leaning against the counter. I um, was getting up. I hadn't shaved or showered for a couple of days. Sorry, probably too much information. And after a couple of days of being in bed with fever and all that stuff, I was like, I got to get cleaned up just to feel a little better that way. And I'm leaning against the counter in our bathroom and I was shaving and I was not feeling great. And this thought comes to mind. You know, when we go home to heaven, we're going to have glorified bodies. The, 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 the word says so. And we're going to have a glorified body. I was like, I wonder what that's like. I wonder what that's going to feel like to never have to deal with any of this stuff again. And all of a sudden it hit me. It was like, wait a minute. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places has been given to me in Christ Jesus. I have that. I simply need to set my faith on that, focus on that. Now you can say, well, Robert, it didn't work. You weren't instantly healed and started glowing in your glorified body like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. But I started to realize that's my portion. So the attack of sickness is actually 
ultimately a divine setup for me to focus on what is truly mine. Everything going on in my nation that's wicked, unjust, and not right. I can focus on that and get angry, or I can focus on, God, what were your plans and purposes when you brought this nation forth, and what do you want to do with it right now? Because I'm going to focus on that, and with my hope-filled, faith-filled expectation, I am going to believe that, decree that, declare that, help establish that in the spirit so it comes forth in the natural. Just like I focused on being healed by his stripes every day. I focused on the truth that Holy Spirit, who lift Jesus out of the grave, dwells in me and quickens my mortal body. And if he could lift Jesus out of the grave, he could certainly lift me up out of a nasty sinus infection. And you could say, well, but it still took a couple weeks, and that's just your immune system kicking in. Well, who gave me my immune system? God. God designed the immune system. And the more I focused on him and his truth, maybe in the natural, that triggers the immune system. Certainly in the, certainly in the supernatural, the substance of my faith helps establish a realm of health and healing and vigor and vitality in me, in my home, in my community, in my nation. What if we all did that? Maybe we'd see something like C-19 bow. Maybe there's some divine strategies that God wants to release to us that we haven't yet grabbed hold of because we've been choosing to grab hold of frustration, irritation, fear, doubt. God, why did you bring us out here to die? As opposed to saying, what if this is actually a divine setup where God has something to teach us in the midst of it so we can see the enemy that we're seeing clearly that we think is amassing and advancing? What if... God is actually wanting to give us strategies to co-labor with him to see that enemy completely, utterly, and totally destroyed, just like in Exodus 14. So how do we do that? Well, as I continue to sit with the Lord, this is what bubbled up in me. And it really comes down to what we choose to believe. And if we truly believe certain things, then certain things will happen. Like, for example, in the midst of what I was seeing in my state, with uh, some of the Arizona uh, uh, voting, let's be kind and call them irregularities, um, and and some of the reports originally of how about 20% of machines were irregular. Some might say tampered with, some might say something else, but let's be gracious and say irregular. Then all of a sudden it was at 40%. The latest report I heard is up to 70% of the voting machines in my state were there were irregularities with them, which, you know, thankfully we're asking questions and thankfully it's being looked into. Now let's watch over our hearts while we do that and maintain a kingdom perspective. But what if even all those irregularities as opposed to getting all irritated, agitated, I can't believe I had people texting me. Can you believe what's going on? And I would text back. Yeah, I can. The, the enemy's real and he works through people and he steals and he lies and he cheats and he's, he, he does all those things. But remember, no person is our enemy. The enemy is our enemy. So let's maintain a kingdom focus and let's pray for righteousness to establish. Let's pray for if we're seeing an enemy of lies, cheats, and corruption, let's not get irritated, frustrated, and angry, throw up our hands, curse, and be offended, and release more darkness into the darkness. Let's turn to God and figure out what's our strategy to be part of your solution. So I started declaring, Lord, let every bit of corruption be exposed. Wherever there's the darkness of corruption, wherever there's the darkness of treachery or tyranny, uh, shine your light into it and expose it. And I actually, because of that, ended up being encouraged when it went from 18 or 20 percent of the machines being labeled as uh, uh, irregularities to 40 percent to now 70 percent. It's like, God, you're doing it. You're showing how far and wide the system has become that needs to be dealt with and praise you, Lord, that you can deal with it. Now, we can look at that as the enemy is amassing and advancing, or we can decide, what do I believe in the midst of seeing all this? Do I believe that what Psalm 24 says, that my God is the Lord God Almighty, invincible in battle. Because if I believe that, if I believe that, then in the midst of seeing the enemy seemingly advancing, seemingly winning, seemingly cheating and getting away with it, then my perspective is going to be, God, I see that, 
but you are almighty and you are invincible in battle, which means it can look like the enemy's amassing and advancing. But ultimately, this is a divine setup. You have a plan for it. How do I partner with you in it? And for me, it was it was prayers. It was decrees. It was worshiping God. It was declaring who my God is in my state and in my nation. It was I won't go into all of it, but God took me into visions of how to release that in the spirit out throughout my state and throughout my nation. But if we truly believe our God is the Lord strong and mighty, our God is the Lord invincible. If we truly believe that our God is the one who, according to Genesis 50 uh, verse 20 and Romans 8, 28, is the one who turns all things to the good, then we'll stop in those moments and say, I see a lot of ungood. I see a lot of unrighteousness. I see a lot of unwickedness. But if I truly believe that my God's almighty, if I truly believe my God's invincible in battle, if I truly believe my God turns all things to the good, then even in this thing, I can start praying and decreeing and worshiping and praising him that he is up to all of that. But it begins with that. What if this is all just a setup? What do I believe in this moment? Do I believe the enemy's winning? Do I believe the enemy's bigger? Do I believe that the enemy's getting away with it all? Or do I believe that while seeing what the enemy is up to, my God is bigger. My God is wiser. My God is the God of Exodus 14, who is up to something in the midst of all this. My God is almighty. My God is invincible. My God turns all things to the good. So I command all of this to turn to the good. I was praying, Lord, thank you that you're exposing every area that needs addressing so we can root out all unrighteousness and all injustice in my state and in my nation. Thank you, God, that Every single power and principality and darkness behind all of this is being exposed and expunged. Thank you, God, that this is all a divine setup. So Hamans will be hung on their own gallows. Goliath's heads will be cut off with their own swords. And Jezebel's and Ahab's will be cast down by those they have been, they have dismissed as impotent and unimportant. Praise you, God, that you are at work in the midst of this. And praise you, God, that you're going to speak to each of your people to shift their perspective and to look for you to look to you, to seek you on how to shift into a kingdom perspective and participate with your plans and purposes, your agenda, your battle plan, your blueprint to see this all shift because you're not being outmaneuvered by the enemy no matter how it looks. You are up to something. This is a divine setup unto something great and glorious that I haven't seen yet. Right now I see the enemy and I'm going to keep seeing what he's doing, not under discouragement, but under being able to look to you to get your instructions. How do I advance? How do I walk on dry ground through all this? Where is the dry ground in all this? Where do I stand in Christ? How do I stand in Christ? How do I stretch forth the cross of calvary like moses stretched forth his his shepherd staff because the cross of calvary is even more powerful than that supernaturally empowered shepherd staff how do i stand in you with you and for you in the midst of this so the enemy we see today will never be seen again in jesus's name when we understand that all of this ultimately is a divine setup, and the enemy's only going to get away with this stuff if we give place to an unkingdom perspective, if we give place and stay in that place and rationalize and justify not give not a kingdom perspective. We rationalize and justify self-pity, anger, frustration, fear, uh, murmuring, complaining, cursing, maligning, releasing darkness. When we rationalize and justify and choose to stay in that, we're actually working for the enemy, even though we think in our outrage, we're pointing him out and standing against him. When we realize, what if this is all just a setup? Then we turn our eyes to God and we get the instructions on how to move forward through that parted Red Sea. The Red Sea will part now because, when, again, when you read Exodus 14, and it's the same in Joshua, is it 6 or 7, when they advance through um, uh, uh, the Jordan. And it's when they put their foot in the water it parts or it was it stacked up and was held back when we look to god and we get that instruction we're willing to step out all of a sudden things begin to change and then he'll show us the way through unto the enemy being destroyed so let me ask you what the enemy or the, sorry what god asked me about the enemy and all that the enemy was doing let me ask you that same question whatever you've been looking at wherever you've been seeing the enemy on display 
What if it's all simply a divine setup for an amazing kingdom victory? If you're willing to entertain that question, then all of a sudden you shift from when you see the giants roaming in the land. I started with that long list of all the things that are going on right now, all the things that if we give our focus and attention to, we can see the darkness and we can get frustrated, we can get irritated, we can get angry, we can get discouraged, we can get depressed, all that stuff that'll take us out of our kingdom calling, our kingdom mandate and our place in God. Because remember, our weapons are not mighty. Our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are not in us. Our weapons, you know, uh, anger is a carnal weapon. Frustration, irritation, those are carnal weapons. They'll make us feel strong in the moment, but they're not. They're not effective for the kingdom. What's mighty, our, our weapons in God are mighty. We have mighty weapons in God that pull down the strongholds. And that's what we're here to deal with. We're here to deal with the strongholds, the powers, the principalities, not the people in league with them knowingly or unknowingly, who we can see what they're partnering with. We're not here to take them out. We're here to take out the powers and principalities behind them, hopefully so they get set free and come into a saving knowledge of our glorious Lord Jesus who made them who loves them, who died on the cross for them as well, and who wants to use them powerfully for his kingdom. They just got radically sidetracked somewhere. But let's fight for them, not against them. Our weapons are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. When we get that and we get that when we see the enemy, the darkness, the unrighteousness, the injustice, openly strutting about, mocking God, openly, seemingly amassing and advancing, but we realize, what if this is all simply a divine setup for an amazing kingdom victory to come forth that I have a part to play in it? Then we shift from being the army of God cowering on the sideline as Goliath struts about, and we step into being a David. Every single one of you watching, every man, every woman, every young person, even every child watching this right now, God's plans and purposes for you in this season is to be a David, to slay the giants in the land to tear down the powers of darkness, the powers and principalities with the mighty weapons in God. And that begins with entertaining the question, okay, I see the enemy advancing. I see the enemy amassing. I see the giants in the land openly strutting about, seeming to get away with all of it, mocking my God, mocking his plans and purposes. But what if? This is all simply a divine setup for an amazing kingdom victory. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me be how to be like David. Speak to me how to stare down that power and principality. Not the politician, not the media person, not the whatever. Not the person in league with this or that the enemy's working through in this. Not the government, not the nation, not the state, not the governor, not those things, but the powers and principalities. And Lord, how do I run at them and saying, who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine, to come against the people of God, the plans and purposes of God? My God will destroy you and I'm going to cut your head off. That's what we're to be doing right now. And it begins when we realize we entertain the question. We let God shift our perspective with, hey, 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 you're seeing the enemy seemingly amass in advance. But look to me just for a second. Let me ask you a question. What if I'm still the God of Exodus 14? What if I'm still the God of the cross of Calvary? What if I'm still the Lord Almighty? What if I'm still invincible in battle? What if I still turn all things the good. What if I really am the same yesterday, today, and forever? And this thing that seems bigger and darker and more wicked and more impossible than anything in your history or the history of your nation or bloodline or whatever it is, what if you realize to me, it's not any bigger than what I dealt with by stepping down into this realm when the whole world was given over to darkness and the enemy actually had the keys of authority of this realm. And I sent my son into it to deal with all of it through the finished work of the cross. And remember, the day I won that victory with my son, many fell away because to them, they couldn't see the victory yet. They didn't realize the cross, just like the Red Sea, but the cross even more so was a divine setup for an incredible kingdom victory. And what if... It's the same today. So that's the question God asked me. What if this is all just a setup? 
that helped shift things for me, encouraging me. It, it really worked to empower me to co-labor with him. And I'm expecting great things. Yes, I get it. Darkness may increase. Wickedness may increase. We may be seeing more of it. But when we get, it's so that we can deal with all of it. All of a sudden now, it doesn't mean there's not moments where it's discouraging or disheartening, but we shake it off by going, hey, wait, 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 wait. What if this is all simply a setup for an incredible kingdom victory? So thank you for being with me this week. God's going to use you powerfully. Don't forget, get your copy of Realms of Power, our new book. Leave a five-star review at Amazon. Leave a five-star review of the podcast Heroes Arise on Apple Podcast or Google or Spotify. Get into the drawing for um, all the, the giveaways of our cool new mugs. Feel free to email me, robert at roberthodgkin.com, and let me know that you entered into – because I don't, I don't review all of the podcast platforms. I'll, I'll look at Amazon. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure we draw from everybody that leaves the five-star review on Amazon. I tend to do all, listen to all my podcasts on the Apple podcast platform. I know when I send out our, our Heroes Arise podcast uh, each week that we send it out, it goes out on like seven or eight different platforms. I tend to be aware of what goes on on the Apple platform. Uh, so I'll see the, the five-star reviews there. But if you do it anywhere else or just do an anywhere email me so i know to make sure you get in the drawing and then um don't forget about our the victoria soul webinar our free webinar go to patricia king ministries.com um, and you'll click the events link and you'll see the banner or the listing for the victoria soul webinar it's all free but you got to register so our webmaster gets you the link to the free channel that we stream that out on so you can watch or use those links for on demand later and then again one last thing any end of year giving you're considering doing, please consider sewing into Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Front Lines. Help us with some of the updates and upgrades that we're doing. And uh, uh, you'll be blessed for sewing into reaching the whole wide world with messages God gives us, prophetic words God gives us, prayers and decrees for everybody watching God gives us, and most of all, for helping raise up other heroes just like you. We do it every week with this show and through all the other media we create and we send out there for free. So go to roberthotchkin.com or menonthefrontlines.com. Click the donate button, click the giving button, and so an end of year gift. Thank you so much for considering that and for being with me for this episode of Heroes Arise. I'll see you back here again soon. Ready for more? Go to roberthodgkin.com for more teachings, more resources, and more information about Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Frontline.